In this video, I'll show you how to calculate for the number of moles in a reaction. Question 1 reads, in the chemical reaction of iron and sulfur, shown underneath, how many moles of sulfur are needed to react with 1.42 moles of iron? The key to answering these types of questions is organization. So we want to organize our work by writing out everything we know. We're being told that there are 1.42 moles of iron. So over here, we'll write down N, which is the letter we're using to represent moles, is 1.42 moles. And what we're looking for is the amount of moles of sulfur. So I'll just write down N with a question mark here. Notice that we have a ratio of two iron atoms to three sulfur atoms. From that, we can set up a mole ratio. And here's what I mean. Two atoms of iron per every 1.42 moles of iron. And we can make this equal to three atoms of sulfur to an unknown amount of moles. This is called a proportion, where you have one ratio equal to another ratio. And this is one method to solving this. To solve a proportion, we'll cross multiply. So we'll take this number, multiply it to 3, 1.42 times 3. Then we can take this unknown, which we can call n. Remember, we set it as n. n times 2 is 2n. So we have 2n on the right side. And on the left side, we have 4.26. To solve for n, we divide both sides by 2. Watch this. The 2 cancels out. And dividing this number by 2 gives us the amount of moles of sulfur, 2.13. So n is equal to 2.13 moles. Question B asks, calculate the number of moles of iron needed to react with 2.75 moles of sulfur. So once again, they're asking the same thing, except in a different order. They tell us the moles of sulfur, but we don't know the moles of iron. So let me just clear out my work here. And I'll write down, N is equal to 2.75. And this time, we don't know the moles of iron. Setting up our ratios, we have two atoms of iron per every unknown number of moles is equal to three atoms of sulfur per every 2.75 moles of sulfur. Doing the cross multiplication, n times three is three n, and 2.75 times two is 5.5. As we did before, we'll divide both sides now by three and we end up with, let me just write this down for reference, we end up with n is equal to 1.83. We need this to three significant figures. Remember, 1.83 repeating is 1.8333 and so on. So to three significant figures, the answer would be 1.83 moles. Those are the answers to A and B. Let's move on to question two. When acetylene, C2H2, burns in oxygen, high temperatures are produced that are used for welding metals. And the chemical reaction is shown underneath. How many grams of CO2 are produced when 54.6 grams of C2H2 is burned? So we're looking for the mass of CO2. And we're told the mass of C2H2, which is 54. Remember, the key to these questions is organization. What we'll need to do is find the amount of moles of this compound. And the way we can do that is first calculate the molar mass. And then using the molar mass and the mass, we can find the number of moles. Because remember, molar mass is grams per mole. To quickly find the molar mass of C2H2, the molar mass of individual carbon atoms is 12.01. And we have two of them, two atoms of carbon. So 12.01 times 2 gives us the following number. And the molar mass of hydrogen is 1.01. And we have two of those. So plus 1.01 times 2. And we get 26.04. 26.04 grams per mole is the molar mass of acetylene. Using 54.6 grams, I'll multiply this number to the flipped version of this, where the moles are at the top 
in grams are at the bottom. So I have one mole per every 26.04 grams. This unit and this unit will cancel out, leaving us with the amount of moles. So 54.6 divided by 26.04, and we need this to three significant figures, we get 2.096. 2.096. And like I said, we need this to three significant figures, although I've written four here. I'll just place a dot. I don't want to round just yet because we're not done. So that is the amount of moles of acetylene. Using the same technique that we learned in question number one, we'll set up a ratio. We have two molecules of C2H2 per every 2.096 moles of that. And we'll make this equal to four molecules of CO2 and we're looking for the amount of moles, which I'll represent as n. Let's cross multiply. Using the number that's on our screen, multiply that to 4. And then multiplying n to 2 gives us 2n. So think of 2n on the right side and this number on the left side. As we did in question number 1, we now divide both sides by, in this case, 2. So whatever that number was that was on our calculator, divide by 2. And now we can round this number to three significant figures. 4 decimal 19. N is equal to 4 decimal 19 moles of CO2. The last step to solving this problem, which is to find, remember, the mass of CO2, is we have to find out the molar mass of CO2 first. And for that, we'll use our calculator. The molar mass of an individual carbon atom is 12 decimal 01 plus two oxygen atoms found in CO2. We have two times the molar mass of oxygen, which is 16.00. That right there represents the molar mass of CO2. Let me write that down for reference. 44.01 grams per mole. Remember, we found the moles right here for CO2, which is 4.19. So I'll multiply this number by 4.19 moles and watch this cancels out with that, leaving us with the amount of grams. So the number on our screen, multiply 2, 4.19, and we end up with a mass of CO2 that's equal to 184.4. decimal We need this to three significant figures, so we'll only report 184 grams. The technique that we use to find moles and grams in question number two is called dimensional analysis. And you can look up a video that we have dedicated to that in case you're curious as to why I chose this method over the proportion method that we used in question one. And there you have it. Two questions on how we can use moles in a reaction for calculations.